Okay, so in this video, uh, I will show you how to create this r these wrinkles in Cinema 4D and Redshift. It turns out that it's very easy. I saw some videos on YouTube about this wrinkle tension map and how to use it, but I couldn't find any tutorials about how to do that in Cinema 4D. So I just uh, figured it out myself. It turns out that it's so easy that I even Bruh. I could uh, figure it out uh, for myself. Okay, so first I'm gonna create the cylinder and I'm gonna decrease the radius and increase... No, I'm gonna... Uh, add this bend deformer and I'm gonna increase the strength of this bend deformer and as you can see this uh, deformation is a bit blocky like uh, there are only four parts here so that's why I'm gonna increase this to something like 10. Now as you can see from the, looking at, uh, from the side uh, this is looking a bit unrealistic because it's kind of increasing its length and I will click this keep length here so that the the cylinder is staying this kind of this volume of the cylinder is stay stays the same and that's going to be important later when i add this tension tag which is actually right now because now i click this button c to make the cylinder editable and add this tension tag and actually i'm going to go in this bend deformer and i'm going to go to frame zero uh, make a keyframe here, uh, change this to zero, and now at at frame 30, I'm gonna make this uh, another keyframe. Actually, it didn't work here. Uh, I'm gonna do this again. So now there's this little animation of the cylinder bending. Now, if you go in this tension tag, you go to the frame zero when there is no deformation happening on this cylinder you have to click this fix tension. This is going to make the tension tag, this is gonna let Cinema 4D know that this is the default state where there is no tension on this cylinder. And now I'm gonna click this make map. And if you go in this vertex map tag and play your animation, as you can see, there's something happening here. This yellow part, the more yellow this is, the more uh, compression and deformation there is from this uh, bend deformer on these polygons. So that means that for this, for example, for this poly uh, polygon, it's gonna be something like half. And for this, it's gonna be something like 190 and 100 here. And actually, I think this is too fast. It's kind of uh, reaching the maximum amount of yellow at frame 9, but I want it to reach it at something like frame 28. So I'm going to increase this amount here. And now, if I go in this tension tag, as you can see, it's kind of uh, smoother. It's not as fast. So now you can even scale this bitch down and as you can see this deformation is going to happen only in the middle of the cylinder here okay so now if you want to connect this to the to a redshift material you need to create the material you need to apply this to your cylinder you need to go in inside and you will have to search for this displacement uh displacement node uh, then you will you will have to connect this to the displacement output Next, you will uh, have to find two more things here. Maxon noise and a vertex attribute. So now, if you... Actually, let me just first create some lights here so that it's easier to see what exactly is going on. Well, let me put it there here and this one over here. So that now, if I open up this Redshift render view, I can see something. So now if I go back in my material, in this vertex attribute, you have to drag in this vertex map and this max on noise, you just have to connect this to the displace displacement text map and this vertex attribute is going to uh, tell the vertex uh, map, not the vertex map, but the displacement, how big is the scale in which parts. So now, I think the last thing you need to do is add this redshift object tag to your object, which you want to be affected by the displacement. Click this override, 
click enabled tessellation and uh, displacement also enabled and now if I zoom in here I think that something already need, uh, should be going on there but I think I need to change this let me go in here and change this to 0 0.1 actually no I need to change this to 0 0.1 over here so now as you can already see that the wrinkles are appearing on this side of this object only on this side because only this side is yellow here because of this tension map and if you were to bend this object the other way as you can see these wrinkles appear uh, on this side uh, as the object bends and this is really cool because you can create all sorts of sorts of animations with this you can change the sc scale of this so that the wrinkles are bigger and you can even go in here and change the overall scale uh, of this deformation so that it's bigger and that's it that's basically how you do this in redshift and cinema 4d so now you can even go back in your material and you can instead of this displacement you can make room for displacement blender which is going to do exactly that is it is going to uh, blend these displacements you can connect this to here and this one to layer zero input so now I think think that this yeah this displacement is working here so now if you create one more for example I would like there to be tinier displacements here which are kind of uh, multiplied by this one so that it looks more like a worm like uh, like the one I had in my thumbnail so for that I'm simply going to create duplicate not both of them but only this one I'm going to click it so I can see what's going on I'm going to change this scale to 0 0.5 uh, actually 0 0.3 let's say and I'm going to connect this one to layer 1 which is one layer off from layer 0 and so now I think that it should be working no it's not um, I think no I needed to connect this to layer 1 and then I think I need to increase this no it's not working why is that oh actually I know why it's not working it's because there needs to be this displacement in the middle display displacement and you need to connect this through this so now if you add it to input here it's going to work and actually it's obviously too much so I'm gonna drag this down I'm gonna click refresh here oh actually you know what it's just taking the last one now so you have to click this additive mode so that they both are kind of together and this is still looks like it's a bit too much for the for my taste so I'm gonna change this to something like 0 0.1 uh, no yeah 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.5 so now as you can see there are these tinier wrinkles here and if I play the animation you can see that all these deformations happen uh, this def uh, this wrinkle map is working here uh, but these uh, other uh, uh, displacement map uh, smaller tinier parts are only on this uh, sides where there is no bending happening and this tension tag wrinkle map works with any deformations that you apply to your object for example there's this taper deformation and if you add this and click this string Bruh. and I think you need to scale this down a bit and move it up as you can see it kind of creates these um, wrinkles here on the top side and that's because there's uh, also this deformation happening because of this wrinkle map here and it kind of it remembers that if you selected this fixed tension when it was uh, without any deformations like this and if you add all of these deformations it will uh, it will use them and create them uh, create those um, this displacement map uh, on the edge not on the edge but on the top part of this 
So does this look inappropriate enough? I don't think it does. So let me just go in this diffuse here and select this uh, refraction transmission. And let me just, you know, I will take this diffuse down and I will select this transmittance color and I'm going to change this to something like this. I'm going to increase, uh, actually, no, I'm going to do this first scatter scale here. Bruh, bruh. And if I increase this absorption scale, as you can see, it's starting to look uh, more like skin. Bruh. And if you increase this more and take this one and drag it down, you will see that it uh, becomes, it looks more like uh, skin. And, you know, you can create whatever, uh, whatever animations and looks you want with this. This tutorial isn't really about this um, subsurface scattering, but as you can see, uh, I just wanted to make this uh, look more like uh, it was in the thumbnail. So you understand that I am not cheating. And now I will just duplicate this. Bruh. And I think this is what I did in the thumbnail version. I just turned it uh, like this and I moved it down so that, yeah, you can you can create all sorts of animations here. And yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you liked it, uh, click like, write some comments, ask some questions. If you didn't like it, well, you know, you can go watch some videos about the royal family or something like that.